Yo, what it do you guys and welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Now, if you guys are new to Destiny or if you're a returning player, this should hopefully cover the armor mods, the mod customization view. And it will go ahead and I'll try and explain as many of these as I can. What's what? And then we'll go over two different builds that I can show you that basically go into two different armor charge formats. So first things first um i want you to go and pay attention to these three things here now there will be timestamps below as well and i will go and put text up on your screen i'm going to try and do all of this in just one go right now so try and follow me as much as you can feel free to pause rewind pay attention to text all of it should come together and you should hopefully walk away from this video going i fully understand this all right and this can be translated to anybody this can be translated to wa uh, warlock this can be translated to hunter titan and all subclasses it doesn't matter what you're going on you should be able to understand everything that you're doing right here and this should help you build around armor charges so let's go over it what is an armor charge how do armor charges work first thing i want you to go and do is pay attention to free symbols or free colors now i don't see the colors very well it has to be said i'm not going to tell you what these colors are because i generally don't see them very well to me most of them are just gold so I don't actually see a difference here. However, if you're colorblind or color deficient like myself, then you can go and pay attention to the symbols at the bottom. There's three arrows going up, there's three circles, and there's three arrows going down. The more so important ones to pay attention to, in my opinion, is these. You'd never really want to have one of these in a build. Well, I'm, sorry, I should go and say, you don't want to go and have a mix of these in one build. You either choose one or the other. You either go in dots or you're going downs. <laughs> which one do you want? Pick one and we're going to go over which one works in a second. So what is an armor charge? How do armor charges work? Now, if you was playing last DLC or let's say that you did stasis or you did witch queen, whatever else it may be, you might realize and remember the terms called elemental wells or charged with light i think it was called there were also war cells, but ignore those for now they're completely stripped from the game if anything strands got like a little bit with the thing that you throw with the tangle it feels a little bit that way but anyways you've got the um charge with light and elemental wells armor charges is kind of like that so anybody who's playing the game right now so don't worry about uh old players right now even new players whenever you play the game whenever you go and do like a super or someone else does a super they tend to generate these like little balls little i don't know what color they are forgive me are they purple little purple balls or black like void little balls on the ground and they're called orbs of power whenever you pick up an orb of power they tend to go ahead and refresh and replenish your super so if i go and cast a super and i drop three orbs of power and you come running over and pick up those orbs of power you're actually trying to refresh your super is what you're looking to go and do on top of that there's also other ways that they scale within let's say you do nightfall activities or whatever and you're trying to increase your score picking up orbs of power is just something that you instinctively want to do there's no downside of you actually doing it except from the fact that you might run from cover and get beamed as you're trying to go ahead and collect one so be a little bit sensible but by all means there's no downfall for picking up orbs of power right when you pick up orbs of power that that's that's what they do right now they don't do anything unless you run one of these two this one is what i call consumption okay this will basically consume orbs of power when you utilize whatever the mod it is that you're running so in this case let's say that i'm going for a grenade build with starfire protocol and i would go and run something in here called grenade kickstart now grenade kickstart doesn't actually it's bugged for me so forgive me but it does say at the top collected an orb of power causes you to gain one temporary armor charge it should say that at the top there and it doesn't forgive me it does do it don't worry i have tested it the idea is if i was going to throw my grenade and I had, uh, I've, I picked up three orbs of power. So I had three armor charges because this converts additionally your armor charges consumed and uh, uh, collected normal power causes you to gain one temporary armor charge. Um, this will basically going to convert the uh, orbs of power into armor charges. And then I'm throwing the orbs of power basically away, if you will. They're, they're invisible. I'm not actually throwing orbs of power, but I'm throwing the armor charges away whenever I use my grenades. And in return, I'm getting replenished energy for my next grenades. Okay, kind of understand that. So that basically means when I pick up those orbs, they don't decay. They're just like a little orb charge that will stay on the left hand side of the screen and they will go and build up. Now, in terms of how many orb, char orb charges can you have, how many armor charges, just understand this. I'll put it on the screen as well. You will basically go ahead and have a maximum of three armor charges. Okay, a maximum of three. Understand that. That's default. Okay. You can have an accumulated total of six, right? But for now, it's free. 
in order for you to go ahead and get six armor charges total you will have to run three of these mods um as you can see here increases the maximum stacks of armor charge you can carry by one we put in that now costs three so i've got seven energy four i've only got one energy left as you can go see here one capacity so it's not like i have room for an awful lot of things going put in there but this will now give me six armor charges to put simply <laughs> some areas you don't really need them other areas they're kind of gray areas it's up to you play around with it and i'm not going to tell you what 100 works we're quite early in lightfall so i'd be lying to you in this video if i said this is 100 best in slot you should be running it all of the time if anybody's saying that they're also lying to you because <laughs> i mean unless someone there is some people who crunch numbers by all means but for the most part we've still got a lot more to go ahead and come out and we got the new raid coming out in just a few days so it'll be interesting to go and see how builds continue to develop from here anyways we've now got six armor charges or we've now got three armor charges as we've now got these free armor charges remember they do not decay they just they just sit there until consumed now consume mods are going to be all your mods that basically have down arrows or they're going to have those colors so this is a consume mod that's a consume mods what's down here this is a consumption mods uh, anything in here that's consumption no no nothing consumption in there there should be one in here utility kickstart i believe and i think Oh, there is also all of these finishes. So I'll just put a couple of finishes in here. Uh, or I'll just put one of the finishes in here, I should say. <laughs> I didn't realize I couldn't uh, mix and match that. Let's just put one finisher in there. Anyway, so if I go into the screen now, you can see all of those have down arrows. This basically means when I get an orb of power and I get one armor charge from that orb of power, if I use any of the respective mods here, I will consume that orb of power and it is gone, right? That armor charge is gone until I pick up more. So in this case, again, if I throw the grenades, I'm going to go and get replenishment for the grenade, so forth, so forth. Now that you understand how they consumed, we also have something in this case that is now also going to be decay. So how does decay work? So unless told otherwise, you're going to have decay in armor charges. So that is going to look something like... Something like... God, there's so many decays here, so I'll just click on uh, this one that one or whatever uh, that one that'll do and then down here we got a decay there as well and then we got decays as well again the dots that you go and see in here decaying now changes how your orbs of power work your armor charges whenever you pick up one orb of power you get one armor charge but it now slowly wears off okay it's decaying from you you have and i'll pull up on the screen here you have 10 seconds until that is gone Okay, so it only lasts 10 seconds, whereas the other ones last infinite until you use an ability. Right, now, time dilation will scale. Time dilation will scale your armor charge duration. If you have one orb of power and you have one armor charge, it was 10 seconds base. If I run one time dilation, it's now 15 seconds. If I run two time dilations, it's now, I think it's 18 seconds. And if I run three time dilations, it's now 20 seconds. That is also stackable on top of how many armor charges and orbs of power you collect. So if I have six, for whatever reason I do, if I basically now go ahead and go to my armor and I now have six of these plus so i got three of these plus three of those i've now got six orbs of power that i've collected from around the area and i've got six stacks of armor charge what this is going to do it's going to give me two minutes worth of decay interesting what can what can we do with that well there's mods here that can go and give you boosted stats if you will so let's say that Let's say that my recovery is quite low, right? So I'm 77 right now, but let's just say that I've got like 40 recovery. Oh no, that's not looking very good. Well, you could basically increase your recovery as a temporary boost. And I believe, and forgive me, I believe the value of these are like 30 per, but also, do they give diminishing? They do give diminishing returns. If you read, always read, read, pause. So what you do, read everything, okay? But they do give you diminishing returns. This should increase you by 30. So right now, if I put one of these on and I at least have one armor charge that is decaying, this should cap me out over a hundred. So it should go ahead and increase my recovery rate completely maxed out, right? And I believe it's 30. I, can't, I think it's 30, 40, 50. I think it works like that, 30, 40, 50. So if I was to run one, that's, that'd be 30, that'd be 40, that'd be 50. 
And I think that's basically how it works. You can end up getting 50 temporary stat in a particular thing if you need to bolster it up. So you're really low recovery. Let's say you're playing a Void Hunter. Uh, anybody who plays Void Hunters, you might know. Recovery is not as important because you're mostly going invisible an awful lot if you're using things like Gaia Falcons uh, Exotic. Um, but let's just say that, you know, oh God, you're coming out of cover a lot and you still need your recovery to tick in. Then something like this isn't a bad idea only if you're running Decay in mods, okay? So the main area that you will start to see these in, you won't see, I mean, it's up to you if you want to. I personally don't think some of these are worth it. That's just my two cents. Um, again, it's up to you. Um, however, what you will probably end up seeing is something like this. So we're going to go ahead and go with the Ks. And let's say that we're going to go ahead and take, I think it's Arc that I have on me. Let's go with Arc right now. So we're going to have those. And then we're going to have these. And I'm going to explain what we're doing right now. Okay, so when I now collect, <laughs> I know it's a lot to take in. When I now go ahead and collect an orb of power, I get an armor charge. Those armor charges are scaling on the amount of time that I have. If I go and get, uh, I can only get three armor charges. See what we've done there? We've got rid of the charged up modding here. So I can only get three armor charges maximum, right? By three orbs of power. We've now got these things. Collect an orb of power causes you to gain one temporary armor charge. Your arc weapons gain a small bonus to damage whilst you have any armor charge. Okay. Now the way that these work, oh, hopefully I don't get this value wrong. I think it's you get one of these is 10% weapon increase. Two of them is 17% weapon increase, and three of them is 22% weapon increase. So you might be thinking, well, how does that work and when would I use that? Let's say you're raiding with me right now. Let's say that we're going to go and group up the bosses available to be attacked. Let's say I go ahead and use my Well of Radiance group on me. Your weapons get damage increased due to the empowering buff that Well of Radiance gives you. I think that's 25% damage increase. Also, standing inside my well, uh, you're also going to go and pick up the free um, orbs of power that I go ahead and guarantee summon whenever I cast my well. Okay, now that you stand in there, your time dilation is now going to scale off of those free orbs of power that you pick up, and you're going to get 22% weapon damage, which means not only you get 25% from my well, you're also getting 22%, and you can run a weapon. So in this case, if it's an arc weapon surge, you want to run an arc weapon with it. And on top of that, there are perks out there like explosive light, picking up an orb of power increases the next projectiles, blast radius, uh, radius and damage. So you get even more damage from something like that. You can see how it's all coming together, right? You can see how it's all coming together. You love a good plan. I love a good plan. So they're quite simplistic to go and understand. Inside a boss fight, in my opinion, you would not need three lots of time dilation. That's overkill. Uh, boss, boss's DPS normally shouldn't last for two minutes. I don't know why it would, but inside Destiny, you don't really tend to go and fight bosses for two minutes straight solid like that, especially raid bosses or dungeon bosses. They tend to have intervals and increments of uh, HP bars. It's kind of imagine it like HP gating, if you will. You take out a third of its HP and then the boss goes, nah, yeah, go fight some bads for a minute. You know, go go fight someone else. I'll be back in a minute. All right. And then you go off and do something else and then you come back together. So this is a bit overkill. Ideally, I'd probably go ahead and run. I don't know. What's that? That gives you a good amount. I'd probably go and run something like that if I wanted to. If I'm looking to go ahead and increase damage and keep my damage up for a little bit longer. Obviously, more and more people inside the raid team can also go ahead and have this as well. This is going to be really, really good for decaying builds. Again, these are decaying, the three dots, decaying builds in raid and dungeon environments. Okay? So the difference between them is this right here is a consumption. This will consume. So if I had six stacks of orb, of, uh, orb if I had six orbs of power and six stacks of um, armor charge and I throw one grenade kickstart, I will lose all six in one throw in return for more ability energy to my grenades. Or I don't run that and I run this and instead I decay and I get more to my weapon damage. It It's so situational onto what you're doing. If I had to give you an example um, of what I would be running, something like on this build, um, we can run over some mods right now. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how armor charges work. Let's go over some other mods in here just really, really quickly. Um, we've got some like special ammo finders, special ammo scouts. You basically pair these together. If you're running solo, you would basically run the ammo finders, okay? So that's this or this. If you're running in a group, you'd run the ammo finders plus this. The scout basically goes 
when I see a heavy ammo brick drop for myself, odds are you see a heavy ammo brock, uh, brock brick drop for you as well. So um, it reminds me a little bit of losing finish on minus the champions and whatnot, but it's a good way for you to, it doesn't guarantee it either, but um, it just uh, it's just a good way to help you guys go ahead and get some ammo return. Keep in mind this as well and any kind of ammo mods that you're running, pay attention to the bottom box down there. You will basically go ahead and primary ammo weapons um, especially exotics so in this case an exotic primary as you can see here as an example this is also an exotic primary as you can see um, these will basically give you an increased chance of getting uh, some ammo to go ahead and drop as you can see there and it has to be final blows if you run multiple copies of these you run two of those you just basically get more ammo whenever you pick up the ammo break and that's basically how it works okay um from there onwards other mods that you got in here ashes to assets really good on grenade builds um so on my build right here um where i'm running starfire protocol if you don't play warlock tldr really quickly it's a grenade build okay so on something like this this would be great i'd go and run something like that uh on the rest of things what else would i go and throw in again if i run these mods pay attention to what it says at the bottom you get diminishing returns for each additional copy of the mods ideally if you want just kind of like somewhat math you tend to run two and don't really run three the three really gets less and less imagine that they're getting 50 percent less effective every time might not be the exact numbers but it gives you an idea right so if i'm running the grenade build i'd run these if i was running a melee build i'd probably run something like that if i was running an ad clearing build for super i'd probably run something like this um and i could pair that with something like this dynamo whenever i go and reduce the super cooldown i'm going to use a class ability so i'd be using my class ability and then i'd be using super and i'd be clearing lots of enemies and creating lots of orbs of power for my allies and um, there's something like that that you can do this one's currently grayed out because it's currently disabled there's a bit of a bug i believe it was pvp that shouldn't be disabled in the future don't worry about it um, from there onwards, other things that you can go and run. Radiant Light is great inside group environments, raid team environments, dungeon environments. When you have a coordinated, cohesive group that is working together, you run Radiant Light. It increases the current armor charge by one that you currently have. And since there's going to be so much generation of orbs within, within fire teams, you will be able to cohesively work together to go ahead and keep your uptime. So weapon surges and stuff like that is only going to go and benefit if you've already got an orb. You come over to me, I cast my one of Radiance, and you get even more and on top of that this also works better if you don't run the same class that i'm running sorry if you don't run the same subclass so classes warlock hunter titan subclasses void arc so you get the idea so you run a void titan and i run a solar warlock you basically benefit better when i go and use my super from this okay as long as you have something scaling off this from there onwards uh, other things that we can go ahead and run in here this well, we already explained this, didn't we? There's Funnel Wisdom. It gives you like 30. I think I explained that earlier. Um, the Siphon Mods. Siphon Mods are basically just rapid weapon final blows. We'll go ahead and create them. Uh, we'll go ahead and create orbs of power. So you do want to try and maybe run some of these if you can. And try and keep it thematic and synergistic. For example, if you're running something like Solar, then I want to be running something like a Solar Gun. Does that make sense? If you're running something like Arc, I want to be looking for an Arc. Oh, my Iclos SMGs or my whatever uh if you're running uh what have we got in here voids then i'll be running something like void you get the idea i try and pair them together if i can it really does go and help them out um in case i don't know if i went over this in this video forgive me if i didn't um, but what you see down here um some of my mods will cost a lot less um as you can see here it's only one capacity drain um, the reason for that is because it's to do with the artifact of season 20 uh, that as you can go and see here these will cost less grenades will cost less and solar stuff will also cost less as well uh, come next season season 21 22 23 it may be different but for now in case you're wondering why this is so little in cost that's the reason why so it works really well for this season future seasons no idea so all of these are going to be your orbs of power generating very easy to understand and on this page this is mostly for pvp this is for like weapon stowing target acquisition position ads and stuff like that to give you more of an idea about that is target acquisition is to do with magnetism of what you're shooting at so if you tend to struggle a bit more being accurate this will help target acquisition accuracy aiming down sight speed that's ads in so when you pull your gun from your your waist or whatever and then you bring it up and you're looking down the scope that's what we call ads in as well as you can imagine these are more your pvp mods so if you look here and then look there 
much easier. See, it's all filtered and categorized pretty nicely. It's all organized. So that's kind of helmet. On towards gloves, I'll try and just get these done as quick as I can. On towards glo uh, gloves and gauntlets that you can see here. Fastball throws your grenade. Doesn't have, so imagine a grenade arc does this. Fastball makes a grenade arc do that. See that? Basically, you throw it further, less dip. So if you're trying to land it on a head for, or you're trying to be a bit more accurate at a longer distance, this will help you. From there onwards, firepower. Firepower would have worked really well. Oh, sorry. I just realized. Let's say that I'm creating a build right now. Um, oh, I'm on the wrong screen. Let's say that I'm <laughs> let's say that I'm creating a build right now. On this one, I would have ran uh, this and this. And let's say I'm inside a fire team, I would uh, run powerful friends. Did I go over powerful friends? I don't know if I did or didn't. Forgive me. I'm all over the place now. Anyways, power of friends, uh, powerful friends is basically I pick up an orb of, orb of power. It grants you an armor charge. This is really, really good. I would definitely run this inside raid environments or inside team environments. If you're playing solo, don't use this mod. Okay. I don't know if I did actually go over that mod. Forgive me if I didn't. Inside here, I'd probably go for something like firepower. I'd probably go for something like grenade kickstart. So I'd run a grenade kickstart because I'm looking to use armor charges. I'd run, uh, let's let's run two of them. I don't I don't get too much diminishing returns, but I am getting diminishing returns. I don't want to run three of them. I'm going to run firepower, which means whenever I kill enemies with a grenade, I have a chance of generating orbs of power as well. Okay, so that's going to be how I generate orbs of power. It's going to be in this. I kill an enemy. I get refreshment here. I get orbs of power, and I can also go ahead and get uh, a return replenishment to my super all right and then i run over the orb of power and i can give it over towards my teammates see how all of that just fits informatically and synergistically there you go it gives you an idea as for the rest of the mods that you've got in here let's say that you're not running the grenade builds um but we'll go over the other ones causing damage with a grenade reduces your melee cooldown so let's say that you want to be synergistic between grenades and melee uh, you can go and do that or let's say that you're centered on on um melee and you're just you've got grenades anyways you just you want to get your melee back quicker then you can use something like this this is towards you go ahead and get class ability. So if you want to go and use your rift, your dodge, your barrier, whatever else it may be uh, when using grenades, that's fine. Your top row is kind of your grenades, as you can basically go ahead and see here. Um, and then your and then some grenades here. And then this kind of row here is your melees. It's just easier to understand that. So conversion between and synergy between melees, um, class abilities, grenades, whatever. But this is melee kind of focused if you will, this is grenade focus. So again, very, very easy to identify. From there onwards, you've got things like shield break charge. If they had a solar shield, uh, a enemy, not PVP, if they had a solar shield and I break it and I'm running the solar class, I also go and get an armor charge. So it's an easier way of getting armor charges as well without having to get kills. If you struggle at end game content, this can also be nice. Then down here, we got the reload speeds. These, in my opinion, are very good. Okay. As of right now, they're currently bugged, but they're good. Okay. They're, they're good. Uh, I would definitely pair these especially the solar ones harmonic you might go and see this uh, quite a few times harmonic loader is different than solar loader um harmonic harmonizes with what you're taking if you don't understand what i mean by that watch this see how all of this is solar weapons right now that's because i'm playing a solar class pay attention to solar loader if i click there arc loader if i click here stasis loader if i click there void loader get the idea that's kind of how it starts to synergize it will always follow you if you're just flicking between them ideally though you should be using loadouts so you won't have to do this but just so that you understand what harmonic loader is if you're just flexing on the fly and you don't care about loadouts harmonic loader does that it follows you it harmonizes with you otherwise these are all just your other reloads for the weapons that you're currently running and this down here is faster ready and stow ready and stow is putting your weapon away and pulling your weapon out again as you can imagine in pvp switching between like a shotgun and a hand cannon or a sniper or whatever and these are kind of more so your pvp related things so uh, if i was going whoops if i was going to take this build uh, i would then do yeah let's say i would go ahead and do this because i want to get my grenades back a little bit quicker and i would also go ahead and do this so i can go and generate more orbs of power for your body, to put this simplistically, uh, to make this a bit easier for you, um, your body is going to be split in either one of two ways. Forgive me. Um, it's going to be split in either one or two ways. It's either going to be mostly resistances, or if it's not resistances, it's going to be like utility, if you will. Um, there is the other st other place where you can get things like glaives and swords, but it's very rare to go ahead and look into, especially since they kind of nerfed how swords work here. This used to be like loose and blade or whatever it was called back in the day um, and this gave you damage to your swords this doesn't give you damage to your swords anymore it gives you increased recharge rate oh i just bit my tongue it's still it's still good to go ahead and run on lament 
Okay, so if you're looking to go and do Lament, it's still good on that. Otherwise, you've got Scavenger mods down here, hence the utility. It's either resistances or utility. Not an awful lot you can go and do here with the current build that I'm doing. If I'm going grenade build, this isn't really ultimately affecting grenades, if you will. Ideally, I'd look after myself. Right now, the one thing I have seemed to have just noticed is things like a Concussive and Sniper, actually a little bit better, uh, best in slot because these different uh, damage resistances that you have here, depending on the enemy that you go against, inflicts you with different damage. For example, Cabal tend to do a bit more solar. Hive tend to do, you get the idea. Um, so I could go and put this on, but then go against a particular enemy and then this isn't as they're not even doing arc do you know what i mean and then it's like well then this is wasted right someone like sniper is every every all of the enemies have sniper and all enemies have grenades or um like grenade launchers that land next to you and the, the area of effect kind of hurts you so there are these as well okay so these actually seem a little bit better uh although they've always got melee and stuff like that so you get the idea um otherwise inside this build i'd run whatever this isn't too important so i'm just going to go down towards this part then inside here, um, this is where your weapon surges come in. The, le the legs right now are generally quite contested. They're looking very good. Um, looking very, very good. Um, which is actually, isn't that like ironic? Because it wasn't looking good in like the last few seasons. But anyways, it's looking much better now. What are you planning to do? If you're doing a decay in build and so forth, the odds are you're utilizing these. Now for my build, I'm not focused on weapon damage. Not for now. I'm focused on just getting grenades back and utilizing grenades. So therefore I would not run weapon surges with grenades grenades why because i'm running a consumption you guys are with me now awesome so inside here i'd probably run something like this instead i might go something like i don't know let's say absolution with innovation and innovation or i could go something like let's just say i don't know better already so this one is it heals you the moment you pick something up so it's just a little burst of healing this one is it will start your healing regeneration like how recovery does the moment you pick up an orb of power this only works better in my opinion if you're not being targeted by something aka if you're running like an invisibility build better already works better there if you're not running an invisibility build where you can still be targeted um better already doesn't actually make sense at that point because running over to the health orb and picking up the health orb if i pick up the health orb and i get shot right then there right after i picked it up then it stops the regeneration so it, it kind of makes it a little bit rough this would be better at that point so i just get a little burst of healing for picking them up um then from there onwards innovation i get grenades energy back if you will melee energy back class energy back or if I reduces all your ability cooldowns every time you pick up an orb of power, that can also work really well because you see these give me diminishing returns. So if I pair three of these together, they get worse and worse and worse. Or I could also go and do this and also benefit other things from it. So I can I like to go and run one absolution with two innovations for this build. It's up to you what you want to go and run, but at least there isn't as many diminishing returns if I was going to stack it three times. I'm sure the math comes out that I'm wrong, but for, for the most part, it doesn't matter. At least I still benefit. I can get my rift back and I can get my melee back a little bit quicker as well um in terms of other things that you got down here orbs of restoration it always goes to the ability that you have least used this is counterintuitive if you are running a kickstart mods because i well i mean if you're if you don't use your other two abilities let's say i don't use my rift and i don't use my melee but i do use my grenades and then i have orb of restoration that makes sense because it can only go to my grenades does that make sense? But let's say I've used my Rift, I've used my uh, melee, and I've used my uh, grenades. And let's say the grenade was the last one that I used, and I had this. Then my grenade might actually jump over the replenishing than the other two. And if it does, then this is going to be... Where's it gone? This is going to be counterintuitive. It only goes to the least amount, okay? Just so that you understand that. You can use it, but you have to pay attention to it. Otherwise, it's like a surplus, okay? <laughs> Where you, you don't want to use other things. Excuse me. Stacks on stacks, um, as kind of, uh, I didn't actually go over stacks on stacks, did I? Stacks on stacks, as you can go ahead and see here, picking up an orb of power grants you an additional stack of armor charge. Stacks on stacks is, um, I pick up one orb of power, I get two armor charges for it. When would I run stacks and stacks? Um, I would run, hopefully, I'm sorry, in the video, I'm going to put this earlier inside the flavor text about stacks and stacks, but we got here and now we're talking about stacks and stacks. Sorry that it's a bit late, but anyways, we still covered it. If you're still watching from now, by the way, thank you guys for being here. It's a long video. It's a lot to cover, but I really want to make sure I go over it so that you're not left with any questions afterwards. So if you use me as a podcast right now, thank you very much. And if you do like it, go ahead and give it a like. We're almost done. I'm trying to like speed through this, all right? 
Stacks on stacks um, is good if you're running uh, any kind of charged ups. Uh, if you're not running charged ups, um, you know, it's a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, you can only get, obviously, you can only have three armor charges maximum if you don't run charged up. If I do run charged up, I've now got four. If I pick stacks and stacks, that's a better, do you see what I mean? I get two, two. So I pick up one orb of power, I get two armor charges. I pick up another one, I've now got four armor charges. Kind of makes more sense then. Uh, I'd only probably, I know this, this might just be me. I'd only run it in increments of essentially four and six. That's basically it. That's the only time I run stacks and stacks. This is I'm running four and six. If I'm running five, I don't even want to use it then either. It's a, it's a probably like an OCD kind of thing where it's like, oh, I've got five stacks and stacks doesn't make as much sense here. It does. It probably does, but I would probably go ahead and pair it if I'm running four and above. Okay. Four and above. That's when I'd use stacks and stacks. Otherwise, it doesn't matter as much. And again, it would just help your overall decaying uh, or your overall charges. Um, so you can go to run a stacks. And, let's say that I run a charge charged up here. Let's go and say that I run a stacks on stacks there. There you go. So now I've actually got something in those slots so they don't look too empty. Okay. And obviously, keep in mind, that's also going to help my grenade kickstart. Go ahead and get charged back a little bit quicker. From there onwards, um, you've then got all of your um, reload. So if I was going to put my weapon away, it would reload that weapon over time. Uh, and then we've also got the reserves. Reserves can also be generally uh, really good as well. Again, more so that you're going to put these... Um, get bonus reserves when picking up ammo. Yeah, um, you tend to go and put these in uh, more so like raid environments as well. They're not quite the scavengers, um, which is a bit rough because uh, this increases the amount of ammo that you can carry. So let's say that I can carry seven reserve rockets. If I had this, I might be able to go and carry eight reserve rockets. Whereas this one is, whenever I pick up ammo on the grounds, I would get uh, a bit more bonus reserves whenever I go and pick up the ammo. So this is kind of like when you're in the middle of the raids, off you go. This is more like as you kind of start in the raid with Scavenger and you take the rally banner. This is more kind of for that. <laughs> They're just there, all right? They're just there. But ideally, they pair together and you can go and take them. All right. Anyways, I would go ahead and run, I don't know, this and this. Okay, that's why I go and run. And then finally, we've got the bond. And then the bond down here as well. Um, this is also cooldowns all across the board. Uh, reduces uh, grenade cooldown when you use your class. Um, that is definitely something I'm going to be want to be taking inside this build. Um, melee cooldown when using your class or all cooldowns when using your class. Okay, distribution. Um, other things that are going to run in here, since I'm not decaying, I wouldn't go and run time dilations or anything. Um, at this point, it gets a little bit tough because I don't want the finishes as much. I'm sure there's finisher builds out there, um, but finishes... One of these was counterintuitive and I can't figure out which one it is. Uh, but one thing you can go and do is use Empowering Finisher, which means that whenever you go and get a final blow, it will grant you one temporary armor charge when you have none. Um, do obviously keep in mind it is temporary as well, but you kind of get the idea. So the Empowered Finisher could be a good way for you to go and also generate other orbs of power. Otherwise, again, I'd probably go and run bombers or I might go and run like distribution. Or I might go and run bomber and bomber. And that's probably something that I would go and take here. All right. Um, we already explained those. We explained kickstarts. You know how this works. You know how that works. Um, gain a powerful overshield while performing your finisher. You could probably go and run something like this with something like, I don't know, this and run it in like grandmasters or something. If you need like extra uh, energy, special energy back and you can also go and heal yourself or give you an overshield. There is also a healing one here as well. So if you're like, oh, I'm about to die and something's low you can also panic and just do this but keep in mind it does consume an armor charge um so you get the idea but anyways how would my build look my build would look something like that and it would give you an idea how i would utilize a grenade build to my advantage and to my benefit towards someone like starfire protocol my goodness that was a lot to cover anyways i wanted to go and make sure that i went over it as far as i could so that you guys could really understand it and hopefully leave no stone left unturned i don't know if i did and if they do add more mods in the future maybe i'll come back with another guide if i don't forgive me i'll try and just tldr it if i can but hopefully you guys understand everything think you should understand what all of the mods do how you could possibly go and build something where the mod uh, customization now is and now when i hover over it i can see it all here and then how that can utilize and be utilized on a build like that obviously from there onwards you fill in the blanks and you start to go and work with all of this uh with the stats obviously just tldr resilience okay just bump your resilience up to 100 percent uh up to 100 because you basically go and get more damage reduction just so you understand that and then from there onwards fragments and abilities it's a little bit just dependent on how you want to go and do it for starfire protocol i'd use a lot of singes a lot of scorches a lot of scorches and ignitions because ideally ignitions give me more damage output when utilizing things and since my grenade scorches you get the idea right 
anyways, that is going to be that video. I'm going to wrap it up here and try and get some editing done. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Again, a friendly reminder is going to like it. I don't know if you like long videos like this or if you guys would prefer me just to edit it and shorten it down. If you do hear this, I'd appreciate some feedback if you get to this stage, all right? Otherwise, thank you guys for watching. Uh, good luck with your builds. If you've got any questions, hit me down inside the comment section. If you think there's any friends out there who would benefit from a video like this, go share it with them. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. But as always, I'll catch you guys again in the next video.